Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you this book, Life in the Ancient Indus River Valley. So let's just dive right in. Life in the Ancient Indus River Valley. The table of contents. We're going to read Indus Civilization, a land of riches, a trading nation, cities made of clay, life of the Aryans, rulers and empires, religions and beliefs, words and writing, arts and culture, amazing inventions, from rise to ruin, and ancient legacies. Indus Civilization Two of the world's greatest ancient civilizations began in the Indus River Valley in what is now Pakistan. The earliest was the Harappans, who built highly advanced cities from 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE. In 1750 BCE, the Aryans, a warrior people from the north, invaded the Indus River Valley and then spread across ancient India. The Harappans. The Harappans were a wealthy nation of farmers, craftspeople, and traders. Five thousand years ago, the Harappans built clay walled cities that had sewage systems for carrying water into and out of homes. They were also one of the first peoples to build sailing ships. The Harappans developed a system of writing to record their trade and their lives that scholars cannot understand today. The Aryans arrive. The Aryans were nomadic peoples who lived in what is now Central Asia. When the Aryans moved into the Indus River Valley, historians think they intermixed with the Harappans. Over time, the Aryan culture spread from the Indus further south into the Ganges River Valley, creating the ancient Indian civilization. Historians once believed that the Aryans destroyed the Harappans, who were also called the ancient Indus River Valley civilization, but there is no archaeological evidence of this. A Land of Riches the Indus River is one of the world's longest rivers. It starts in Tibet, in the Himalaya Mountains, and empties into the Arabian Sea in present-day Pakistan. The area where it empties is called the Indus River Valley. The Lifeblood of the Valley Today the Indus River Valley is a dry, barren area, but thousands of years ago it was lush. Each spring, melting ice and snow from the Himalaya mountains rushed down streams and into the Indus and Saraswati rivers. Heavy summer monsoon rains also brought a lot of water, which caused the rivers to overflow. Muddy water, or silt, from the bursting rivers covered the surrounding floodplains, keeping the soil fertile. You can see the ancient Indus river going through right there. Bountiful earth. Harappan farmers grew barley, wheat, melons, and dates. These crops were used to feed a growing population. They also grew cotton, which they used to make cloth for clothing. Surplus or extra crops were loaded onto sailboats to trade with Mesopotamia or modern day Iraq. The Harappans also herded sheep goats, and a type of cattle called zebus on nearby pastures, and caught fish in the Arabian Sea. Metals and Minerals The Himalaya Mountains in the north were a source of flint, which the Harappans made into blades and other tools. Copper and tin were mined and used to make saws, axes, and chisels. Forests to the west provided wood for tool handles, as well as firewood. Even the plains of the Tar Desert to the east were a resource. The Harappans used gemstones found there, such as lapis lazuli and turquoise. In jewelry, they traded with other peoples. Disaster strikes. 
Historians believe that the Harappan civilization may have ended because of environmental changes. By 1800 BCE, the people had destroyed most of the forests around the valley because they used the wood to fuel their ovens. At about the same time, the Saraswati River, also known as the Gagarhaka River, dried up and the Indus River changed its course, possibly because of an earthquake. Very little rain falls in the Indus River Valley between the annual monsoons, and when the flood waters from the rivers were lost, the surrounding farmland dried up. In other places, the shift in the Indus River's course meant towns built along the river banks were no longer on the banks, and therefore lost the income they received from trade. The shift also caused devastating floods. Eastward to the Ganges River Valley Beginning in 1750 BCE, and for the next 200 to 300 years, Huge waves of Aryans poured into the Indus Valley from the north on camels and horses. Some Aryans settled there to farm and trade, as the Harappans had with neighboring nations around the Arabian Sea and Persian Gulf. Other Aryans traveled east over the desert to reach the Ganges River Valley. The Aryans spent hundreds of years clearing the thick jungles found on the plains alongside the Ganges River to make the land suitable for farming. Rice became a major crop, along with several types of millet, a grass grown for its grain. Big tiger. A trading nation. The ancient Indus River Valley was a paradise for traders. By 200 BCE, the Harappans were trading grain, cloth, and gems from China to Persia, or present-day Iran. Following the Harappans' footsteps, the Aryans exchanged goods to the same peoples on the same routes. Overland Trade Traders used pack animals, including two humped camels, elephants, and carts pulled by bulls to carry goods overland. They traveled long distances over mountain routes through Afghanistan, Persia, and eastern China. Valuable Goods the Harappans exchanged grain, copper pots and pans, mirrors, elephant ivory, cotton cloth, lapis lazuli, shells, and ceramic jewelry for silver from Persia and Afghanistan, and gold and dried fish from Mesopotamia. Sea trade Harappan boats are laden with goods sailed up the Persian Gulf toward Persia and Mesopotamia. These month-long voyages were timed to take advantage of monsoon winds. Ships left Harappan ports between November and April, when the winds blew northeast. They returned between July and September, when winds blew southwest. Money, money, money. For thousands of years, the people of the Indus River Valley and ancient India used a barter or swapping system rather than money. Silver bar coins were first used in ancient India long after the Aryans were established. The coins came to India from Persia and were bar-shaped with symbols. Exchanging Ideas As they traded with other nations, the Harappans learned new skills. The Harappans learned how to make simple plows called ards from the Mesopotamians. Later, the ancient Indians began growing rice brought by Chinese traders. Rice then became a crop of farmers, the main crop of farmers. Cities made of clay. Ancient Harappan cities were built from baked clay bricks and had citadels on raised clay blocks at the center. The two greatest Harappan cities were Harappa and Mahendradaro. Up to 50,000 people lived in Harappa and 30,000 in Mahendradaro. Oh. Number one, it says thick walls kept Indus flood waters away from the city. After the waters receded, the fertile soil made for excellent farmland. Number two up here. Every city had granaries for storing food, factories for making beads, and kilns for baking bricks. 
number three up here, getting a bath. The Harappans were concerned with bathing and cleanliness, and even included bathing as part of their religious ceremonies. Every household had access to a water well, and nearly all houses had a bathroom. The Harappans had indoor plumbing and sewage systems thousands of years before most other civilizations. Clay drain pipes ran from the houses to larger covered drainways on the streets that carried sewage and wastewater out of the city. Number five. Houses were one or two stories high with flat roofs. People slept outside on the roofs on hot summer nights. Exterior walls had no windows. Small windows opened onto a central courtyard and kept rooms cool. Number six right here. It says merchants sold goods from shops and stalls in city streets. And number seven. Seals were pressed onto clay tabs and the tabs were attached to goods going to market. Life of the Aryans. The Aryans' holy books, called the Vedas, are a historical record of their lives. Many stories in the Vedas tell of chariot battles between Aryans and against other peoples in the, of the Indus and Ganges River valleys. Tribal Life. The Aryans lived in Ganas, which means collections. A Gana was made up of several families. Each Ghana had its own territory, ruled by a warrior chief called a Raja, or king. Most Ghana houses were small and built of wood and straw and had only one room, where all family members lived. Historians believe that the families of rulers and nobles lived in larger homes. Fireside Tales Aryan homes had a central hearth called the Yagna. Family members gathered around the Yagna to eat and share news of the day. Food was cooked over the fire using roasting spits and bronze cauldrons. The Aryans ate fruit, vegetables, wheat, barley, rice, beef, goat, and mutton. They also made butter from cow milk and drank cow and goat milk. The fire tender of the household had the important task of keeping the Yagna's fire going. Fire was considered a gift from Agni, the fire god. The caste system. The Aryans in the Indus Valley belonged to castes, or social levels. People were born into castes and could not move up or down. Aryan priests were Brahmins, the highest social level. Warriors and rulers were Kshatriyas. Farmers were members of the Vaisya's caste, and servants and laborers were Sudras. The Aryans called the indigenous people of the Indus Valley Dasas, or the Untouchables. Dasas were considered the lowest level in society. All caste members had to eat food prepared by members of their own caste, work in caste-specific jobs, and marry within their caste. Those who married outside their caste would be killed women and children. Until about 500 BCE, Aryan women were allowed to own property. Some were even famous warriors. Over time, the Brahmins became powerful and developed new ideas, including the idea that women should be strictly controlled. A woman was not allowed to own property and had a husband chosen for her by her parents. Women were taught to obey male members of their family. Most Aryan children began working at a young age. Farmers' sons herded animals, while daughters did housework and fetched water. Boys of the Brahmin caste went to school to learn the sacred Vedas from gurus. Boys from wealthy families were taught mathematics and astronomy, but girls had no formal education. Rulers and Empires Historians are still learning about Harappan government. They know each city had a ruler who lived in a central place. 
Historians believe that the ruler and his advisors formed a government that determined how a city was built, because all Harappan cities were built in the same way. Aryan Kingdoms By 600 BCE, most Aryans had settled by the Ganges River Valley. This area was divided into 16 kingdoms, each ruled by a Raja. The most powerful kingdom was Magadha. The Mauryan Age In 321 BCE, a Raja named Chandragupta Maurya killed the Raja of Magadha and made himself emperor. Chandragupta Maurya was not afraid to kill those who went against his ideas. By the end of his reign, Chandragupta Maurya's territory extended from the Ganges and Indus rivers to most of Afghanistan. The capital of his empire, Pataliputra, had elaborate temples, a university, a library, and public parks. Chandragupta Maurya and the emperors who followed him established a period of rule called the Mauryan Empire. The Reign of Ashoka Chandragupta's grandson Ashoka was one of India's most famous rulers. In 260 BCE, Ashoka sent his army to conquer the native peoples of southern India. The slaughter that followed horrified Ashoka. He began to study the new Indian religion of Buddhism, which said killing is wrong and that all men are equal and deserve respect. He was so impressed with Buddhist ideas that he made Buddhism the official religion of his kingdom. Ashoka ordered thousands of stone pillars and stupas, or monuments, whose dome shape is said to represent the Buddha, to be raised across India. The stupas were carved to show laws on how to behave. These laws are known as Dharma. There's a stupa down here. Big dome. End of an empire. When the ruler of the Mauryans was assassinated in 185 BCE, the empire broke apart. For 500 years, India was again divided into smaller, separate kingdoms. In 320 CE, a minor chieftain named Chandra Gupta took power and became the emperor. The empire he set up was expanded by the rulers who came after him until it came to include the entire north of India from the Bay of Bengal to the Arabian Sea. This empire united the north of India for 220 years. Religions and Beliefs Archaeologists think the Harappans worshipped many gods. When the Aryans invaded the Indus River Valley, they brought their religion with them. Over the next 1,000 years, the Aryans' religion changed borrowing beliefs from Harappan and other cultures. Over time, Aryan beliefs developed into the Hindu religion. Other religions also developed in ancient India. Harappan Beliefs It is hard to know exactly what the Harappans believed because nobody can understand their form of writing or script. Archaeologists think they worshipped many human and animal gods as well as tree and river spirits. They also believed in some form of life after death. Harappans put pottery jars in the graves of their dead. The jars contained food to be eaten in the afterlife. Aryan Gods The Aryans believed that gods, or devas, controlled all things in nature, such as weather, fire, and water. They also believed that helper gods created wealth and happiness, healed illnesses, protected roads, and even got people out of bed each morning. One such god was Shiva, lord of creatures. Shiva may also have been a Harappan god. Burning the Dead One of the most important Aryan gods was Agni, the god of fire. Aryans cremated or burned their dead in the belief that Agni carried the souls to heaven even though Hindus today do not believe in an afterlife, they continue to cremate their dead. Reincarnation The early Aryans believed in an afterlife. Good people went to heaven, while evil people were cast into a pit of blackness. The pit was replaced by a belief in reincarnation, or that every living thing goes through a series of lives. Karma 
Hindus believe people are reborn or reincarnated after they die. What they are reincarnated as depends on karma, which in turn depends on how that person acted in previous lives. Someone who does good deeds builds up good karma. In a new life, in the new life, that person may be wealthier or in a higher caste than in the previous life. A person with bad karma is reborn into a low caste, as an animal, or even as a plant. Hindu Brahmins used the law of karma to explain the caste system. They believed that a person was born a dasa because that person had been bad in a previous life. My cat's decided to start eating his dry food, so if you hear little crunchies in the background, that's him. Ending the cycle. The cycle of reincarnation ends only when a person becomes aware of being one with the universe upon death. Release from the cycle can be achieved by devout worship of one of the many Hindu gods. The Buddha In 560 BCE, Siddhartha Gautama was born into a wealthy Hindu family. When he was 29 years old, he became aware of suffering and set out in search of an answer to human misery. For six years, Siddhartha wandered across India, visiting great teachers or gurus. Then at the age of 35, he spent a night under a tree in meditation. He had visions of his former lives and suddenly understood the cause of misery and cycle of reincarnation. Nirvana In Siddhartha Gautama's awakening or enlightenment, he saw no suffering, greed, or hatred. He called this nirvana and believed it was something a person could reach by following a set of eight rules for living, which he called the Eightfold Path. His followers called him Buddha, or Enlightened One. Buddhism was spread throughout India and the rest of Asia by traveling monks and holy men. Many people adopted the religion because they felt it helped relieve their suffering. The Buddha's teachings developed into a religion that still exists today. 2,500 years after the Buddha was born. Jainism Jainism is a religion based on the idea that people should be truthful, not want too much, and not steal or use violence against other living things. Jains follow the teachings of Vardhamana Mahavira, who lived at the same time as Buddha. Mahavira was a prince who gave up his wealth and traveled around India, meditating and teaching. One of his most important teachings was to not harm other living things, including animals and plants. Today, nearly four million Jains still follow this ancient religion. Words and Writing The Harappans developed a system of writing which they used to record events and trade. Events and trade they did with other peoples. The Aryans' Sanskrit language is still used today in religious ceremonies. Harappan symbols. Harappan writing has been found on many pieces of pottery and stone. Some of it dates from 3500 BCE, which means that the Harappans were one of the first civilizations to use writing. Like other ancient civilizations, such as the Egyptians, Early Harappan writing was based on pictographs, which made up a type of alphabet. Some examples over here. Harappan writing is a mystery to people today. No more than 20 symbols were ever carved on a tablet or seal. Nobody knows why or has been able to decipher the script. Researchers think that each symbol stands for a syllable rather than a letter, and that the language was similar to Dravidian a language still spoken by peoples in southern India. An ancient tongue. The Aryans brought two languages with them when they came to the Indus Valley in about 1500 BCE. The first was Dardic, which has since disappeared. The second one was Sanskrit. Sanskrit is called an Indo-European language because it developed in the area between Europe, India, and Asia. It is similar to the European languages Latin, used in ancient Rome, and ancient Greek. The Sanskrit word for mother is mater, and the word for father is pater, Peter. In Latin, 
These words are mater and pater. Today, Sanskrit is used only by Brahmins, the Hindu priests, to read and write religious books, but some Sanskrit words are found in many modern languages, including Thai. Written Sanskrit The ancient Indians did not develop a written system of Sanskrit for more than 1,000 years. Their holy books, the Vedas, were memorized and passed down from Brahmin to Brahmin. The first known Sanskrit writing is a copy of the Rig Veda holy book, written around 400 BCE. Arts and Culture The Harappans were skilled artists and musicians. The ancient Indians were accomplished stone carvers who erected beautiful temples. Their exciting myths and founding stories are some of the greatest tales ever written. Magnificent Temples The greatest artworks of ancient Indian civilization are its temples. By 400 BCE, Indians were skilled stone workers, having learned from the ancient Greeks with whom they traded. From the years 320 to 540 CE, beautiful stone temples with magnificent carvings were built all over northern India. Harappan art. This is my favorite Harappan statue. Figuring, whatever. Carving, statue. Music, beauty, and art were important to the Harappans. They invented stringed musical instruments that looked like harps and filled their towns and cities with beautiful statues, carved pottery and furniture inlaid with precious stones. Hindu Literature The ancient Indians wrote the world's longest story. It is called the Mahabharata and was written in about 200 CE. The most famous part of it is called the Bhagavad Gita, or Song of the Lord. It is a very long poem about a warrior who talks to a god called Lord Krishna, who is disguised as a chariot driver. India's greatest poet and playwright Kalidasa lived sometime between 450 CE and the early 500s. Little is known about his life. A follower of the goddess Kali, Kalidasa is said to have prayed to the goddess, who rewarded him with his great gift for words. Kalidasa wrote long poems in Sanskrit. The plays he wrote, all of which have happy endings, were the first known plays performed in India. Ancient Indian Festivals Ancient Indians had more festivals and holy days than any other civilization. People fasted, bathed, chanted, drank, and offered gifts to Brahmins. One festival celebrated the birthday of Ganesh, the elephant-headed god of luck, believed to have been born while his mother, the love goddess Parvati, was having a bath. Worshippers at Ganesh festivals broke open coconuts in front of clay figures of Ganesh to show they destroyed their pride. Amazing Inventions The Harappans developed building techniques that helped them to defend their cities against floods and bring water to their fields, or irrigate. As skilled metal workers, they also invented tools such as drills and needles. Master Builders The Harappans dug wells 100 feet deep to provide their cities with water. They also built underground drains to take waste out of the city using stone and bronze tools. Bricks and roads were made standard, and buildings were constructed using precise measurements. Their smallest unit of measure was 0 0.06 inches. No other civilization of the time could measure anything that small. Enduring Technologies Many technologies used around the world today were first used by the Harappans. Bronze tools used in building, including the circular saw and drill, were Harappan inventions. Stoneware pottery for dishes and storage jars were, was designed by Harappan craftspeople. The Harappans were also the first to weave and print on cotton cloth, which they used for clothing and for wrapping goods. Great Mathematicians The most exciting ancient Indian discoveries were in mathematics. Every student in the world uses some of these discoveries. 
In 497 CE, the mathematician Aryabhata developed the decimal system, which simplified calculations. He also determined that the Earth orbits the Sun, something European astronomers did not realize until 1,000 years later. By the year 600, Indians had invented the numerical systems that evolved into the numbers 1 to 9. They may have also developed the concept of zero. From Rise to Ruin By 1900 BCE, the Harappan civilization was in decline. Some cities and towns were abandoned. The Harappans disappeared between 1900 BCE and 1700 BCE, and nobody knows exactly why. The Aryan civilization spread throughout India, adapting and changing over time. Many different peoples invaded India and left their mark. Floods and droughts. Archaeologists only began to study the great cities of the Harappan civilization in the 1920s. The work has been slow and there is no agreement yet on what exactly happened to the Harappans. The cities of Harappa and Mahendradaro are still being excavated, but archaeologists know that they survived and were rebuilt after several ancient floods. Some archaeologists believe the Harappans left the cities to live in smaller groups after the Hakra River dried up and the Hindus changed course. Others think the desert began to creep into the fertile farmlands. The changes to the environment around the Indus altered the economy of the area and may have made the civilization decline. Invasions and Conquerors India's ancient history is one of invasion and adaptation. The Aryans were the first invaders to leave their mark. In 500 BCE, Aryan India was invaded by the Persians who conquered the Indus River Valley. The Persian rulers were then conquered by the Greeks in 327 BCE, led by Macedonian general Alexander the Great. Alexander returned to Greece but left men behind to look after trade routes he established. Mauryan and Gupta Empires After Alexander left, an Indian ruler named Chandragupta Maurya reconquered the Indus River Valley and parts of northern India. Chandragupta Maurya died in 298 BCE. His descendants continued the family rule known as the Mauryan Empire. Over time, the Mauryan Empire weakened and fell apart. India then split into a number of smaller kingdoms that were often invaded by other peoples such as the Greeks and the Persians. In 320 CE, another strong ruler named Chandragupta brought India under his control. Chandragupta was not related to Chandragupta Maurya. His empire is called the Gupta Empire. The Gupta Empire spread south and over hundreds of years made great advances in art, science, and literature. The empire fell apart in 550 CE after the Huns, invaders from western China, took over parts of the empire. Other Invaders After the Gupta Empire, India returned to being a nation of city-states ruled by kings or rajas. In the south, the indigenous peoples, called the Dravidians, lived in kingdoms divided from the north by forests and mountains that were difficult for armies to cross. In 1000 CE, Arabs conquered the city-states in the north. The Arabs brought their religion, Islam, and over time, Muslim rulers established new empires called the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughal Dynasty. The Mughal Dynasty ruled northern India from the 1500s until the early 1800s, expanding with each ruler. After 1858, India came under British colonial rule, and the South and North were once again united. Ancient Legacies The Harappans were all but forgotten until 100 years ago. Now historians are piecing together a record of their achievements including some of the greatest innovations of ancient times, technologies still used today. The ancient Indians' scientific achievements contributed to one of the world's most enduring cultures. 
living history. Many small farming communities in India and Pakistan are located near the sites of ancient Harappan and Indian cities and villages. Farmers still use some of the technology developed thousands of years ago, including ox carts and pottery wheels. Ancient Indian gods are worshipped in shrines, and ancient stupas still dot the countryside. Cotton clothing. The Harappans were the first people to weave the fluffy heads or balls of the cotton plant into thread. They passed this knowledge on as they traded with the Mesopotamians and Persians, and it spread around the world. Today, cotton textiles and clothing are still made in modern Pakistan and India and are exported around the world. Yards of Tradition The traditional Indian dress for women is a sari. Many peasant men in India wear a dhoti, a piece of cloth wrapped around the waist and between the legs. Both were worn in ancient India 4,000 years ago. Movie Hero Thousands of movies are made each year in India. Many Indian movies recreate ancient Indian myths and legends, including hymns from the Vedas. The movies keep history alive and teach moviegoers about the culture of ancient India. Most Indian movies are made in modern Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay, India's Hollywood or Bollywood. The movies almost always feature singing and dancing adapted from ancient or classical Indian dance, and stories from ancient battles. And that's the end of our book tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, good, good night.